My name is Mildred Posey Brown. I was born in Edgar County, Bentonia, Mississippi. I moved to Benton, Mississippi, so they say, when I was six months old. My name is Hugh Bryce. I was born in Cedar Grove Plantation, 16, John Charles Williams Plantation, over there in 1933. We met through family acquaintances, and from that we just went meeting on and off until we finally met, and then we got married. and propose the like, uh, I'm gonna marry you and you gonna marry me, and that's it. <laughs> that yeah, was it. Yeah, yeah, that's what she told me. <laughs> Cause now, he, he named me Ben Ben and called me that. So. I have a nickname, my grandmother. She said I was growing so fast, they called me Drew. Most people call me Drew. The others, she called me Gru, but everybody in, that knew me in the community and places, they called me Gru, Gru. Well, uh, I was born on plantation, little old plantation, and one of them old houses snowed in a little one, snow cone, pin top, no, 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 no lights. No running water, just as you water there, and you, you, if you run with them, you had to get it, go out the way, I like. He's like, I got old well, yonder, but it, it, I just got the picture of it. I got a bucket on it. The bu bucket was about this long. You had to crawl it out the well back when I come home. Back. I was born on oil, because they got oil wells there now. But it wasn't none of it now. <laughs> But uh, after we moved to Benton, we moved on a uh, plantation, and my my granddaddy he he was his own boss where he lived, and uh, he sold his cotton and did all this stuff. Big farm. My children and family. Well, ain't you my family? <laughs> aren't you my husband? <laughs> That's family. <laughs> my first job, the first public job I had was when they built King Daughter's Hospital, 1954. I hope we let the hospital from the ground. That was my first public job. And I bought me a car the next year after that with my income tax. 49 black from a girl that thing was clean, good God almighty. In 1956, I went to work for W. E. Blaine, him out of Mount Ali. I was a roadrunner then. My first job was working for Head Start. We started with Head Start in 1964. That was my first public job and uh, I worked with I worked with, with Head Start for 44 years. My first check that I got from Head Start when we started working was $60. That's what we make a week, $60. Mm -hmm. The first house was right there in Benton and he got burnt down. Second house was over there in Nigger Bend, over there right at the gravel pit. And on Fouché, we got a gravel pit, an apex out of Nard gravel pit. I like, wish I could take y'all through there and let you look at it. Uh, we went through there Sunday evening night to get a trouble through there and let them look at it. My grandchildren, they never saw it. I used to, I was running a great big machine there, and I wasn't living much. What boy from here back up the road that way y'all come in here? I'd go down there and crank my uh, machine up, punch my car and crank up the machine, come back home, cook my breakfast, and then the cooks would be in, I'd go, go back down and then, but it wasn't 12, 14 hours a day. Good money back in them times, good. Oh, well, I just worked for 44 years and uh, that in 2011, 
I came home and decided I would take care of my great grand. They were twins, and my daughter had, didn't have anybody to take care of them, so I quit and come home to take care of them. And I enjoyed them. I didn't have no first car. My first car was when he bought one. And he bought one. Your first car, you bought one. Oh, that, it wasn't mine. Oh, you did buy well, you. you used to go up there to Kane's. Uh, when you went in that head start up there. Oh, that was after I met him. Oh, you my had first boy, car. I don't mind. You done forgot you on one. We had a club. It was called Community Civic Club. And we had it for about 20 some years. And we would take like 36 children every year somewhere. And we would get out and raise that money, like 17 and 18 thousand dollars a year and take these children everywhere. So not only did I go to one state, I, we went all over where the amusement parks and things were. And we enjoyed it. Um, I enjoyed every minute of it. What's your favorite scripture? Nah, you are the other way you wish you could be. That's my favorite. Do unto others as you have them do unto you. I was at church one night and I was looking for a an uh, acre of land for the beer and my neighbor told me that uh, this man Bristol Bunch has some land to say uh, and girl I didn't sleep much that night. Went on in the gravel pit and Wake all day, time I punched the cock off. I didn't stop till I got on the hard road. And uh, he was out there picking cotton. I went out there hoping to pick cotton and get a bunch of call. And he told me, yeah, he had a color. That's when I found the hard road here. Yeah. And we moved here in 1970. We moved here in 1970. And, uh, the most houses was up here, this, this one and one across the road up there. And none of these others were here except two on down the road. We were like four houses. Three houses. on down the road. Three houses on down the road. When we three and here. one up in the field. And out, out of all them older people, I'm the oldest one left on this road. But it's me and her, and it's two moved off the road over on. That's the that they live in. The only four people left still living where they moved again. 1970, when we, 1970 when we moved here. Oh, God, it's just much different than you than chalk and cheese, cause you can't hit a for a child now. You go whoop. People will whoop you around you wouldn't even be, and you wouldn't tell your parents about it because you know you don't get enough. When we moved down here, our neighbor had children. She had. Oh, yeah? She had 12, of them, wasn't but about eight at home. But her children and my children live like sisters and brothers. And they still do. My son died in January, and all of them was here, but she, they live like sisters and brothers. If they fought, so well. If they didn't fight, so well. But they never was a group that fought all the time. Huh. Wonderful. <laughs> I love being a grandparent. I've always wanted to live to be a grandparent and try to be as good a grandparent as my grandmother was to us. Cause she was a good grandmother. And she was a good grandmama. She believed in you doing right. And if you didn't do right, she didn't mind showing you what right meant. <laughs> and uh, she was just one of those people. And she taught you the best things about life. My grandfather did it too. Try to be honest and work for you what you want. And quit trying to manipulate people to lie and go on. And uh, that's the best advice I could give you. 
Oh, I would just tell them to try to go to school, get an education, along with not being a, I say, a rascal. You know, be good, don't get your education and you wouldn't have to be a rascal because you know how to work for yourself. I believe uh, about the happiest one when, when I moved in this house, uh, level to, that was a big feeling. I had a brand new car when I moved here, and a brand new house, six kids. At that time, wasn't nobody working but me. Never missed a play day. Mm -hmm. That was a happy, happy, good feeling. And never had to buy nothing. No, I didn't. Nobody never, never morning had to go to nobody with a bucket, you know, tell them to run every night and roll. Mm -mm, them, don't bring nothing to my house, no bucket, I didn't buy that. I just, my greatest memory is uh, being a parent, grandparent, and a family person. And uh, being here at home where I wouldn't have to be running from here to there with my children. My grandmama and granddad, because that's who raised me. And I had one teacher when I got into school, Ms. Robinson, she always would teach us the, the morals of life and how we should live and what we should do. I think she inspired us. She did. <laughs> I miss uh, like children now sit in the house and play games all day and not play. I miss them being outside playing hopscotch and games and running through the woods and picking plums and whatever, berries or whatever. But these kids now uh, don't want to do nothing. Uh, what I miss inside. about the, the olden days when, when, uh, when I moved here, he wasn't a uh, Fourth of July, everybody ever half of Jackson was on this hill, my people. That's where they was on. Them come from St. Louis, Memphis. They, I had a bus pulling there once. He was up there at that car and the back end was still in the road. No. <laughs> they made it here every year. That's why they was on Fourth of July after the poor boy got out of here. No, no, I was no. I was always glad to be a parent. I just had so many until I had six, four girls and two boys, and that was my life. Love, be honest, and try not to lie, steal, manipulate you. Be honest with you, with, with yourself. Look at God for it up there. Be a good family, live together. Whatever hurt one hurts the other one. And and be good 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 children and try to live for Christ because that's what we're gonna keep them in the end. My husband and my family and my my health. My children. My I'm gonna get to my health. <laughs> my health, <laughs> the potion that I have. I, uh, I've been sick, but I'm better. I can say it like that. It was a time that I had my thyroids removed. My voice never came back. And I prayed to God to just let me talk. And I'm talking. Love, love. Yeah. There's no love in the I communities now. There's no love. I agree with that. I'm proud of my life, what I lived, what I accumulated in my lifetime with, with the learning I had. I'm, I'm proud. I'm excited <laughs> because of my families and my friends and my church. I'm excited. <laughs> well, my girls were good, but them, but them boys, 
I would think they say I was at work and I would think they was at school and they were hid in the closets at the house. But they knew if I had come back here and found them, it was going to be murder in here. <laughs> they would think it'd be murder. But uh, they say their daddy would come home for dinner and park his motor grader and they would go get in the closet and stay <laughs> till he eat it gently. <laughs> and that's most of the regret, but they did. Uh, did a good, uh, the one that died in Jan January, he went to the, finished school, went to the army. My other boy, he was a good cop, but he had his ways, you know, but he was a good person. Oh, Lord. I have so many of them in I have a lot of memories in this life. That ought to be easy that we've been able to provide for our children all their lives. We. And uh, yeah, it was we. Uh, <laughs> we've been able to provide for our children all their lives, and uh, they never had to just struggle all by themselves. We always were there to help them. Okay, uh, 50. It'll be 6th yeah, in September. The 6th of January. The 6th of January? January. Okay, all right. I won't argue with you. My name is Mildred Brown, and I'm, I'll be 79 years old, September 19th, and I've been married to him forever. And uh, Let's see. Yeah. I'm thankful that uh, We've had our ups and downs, but we made it thus far. Yeah. Mm -hmm.